Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today, and in this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip, we're going to be looking at the brand new audio recorder and options that we have within GarageBand for iPhone 2.2. So this is the video number six in our series on the new features in version 2.2. So this is a real evolution in, or almost revolution in the way that you can actually record your external audio devices using your iPhone or any iOS device. So if you've used the audio recorder in the past, you'd remember that you had some very limited effects. So you had some a small amount of reverb, you had the, the telephone, the monster, you had some, some wacky sort of fun effects. And it really showed that back in the early days, GarageBand was really aimed at people that just wanted to record something, have a bit of fun, not really for a professional kind of sound. What we have now though is a whole bunch of template settings, uh, EQ, plugins, options for different effects that we can use with our particular recordings. So let's jump in and take a look. If we tap on the voice options first of all here, it will drop us into the default voice which is for lead vocals. But if we select there and go into the browser, then we can see that we have a whole bunch of different vocal options here and if we change that so we're on lead vocals if we hit heavy distortion what you'll notice is that our options here the different types of settings that we have that we can change do change along with that we can of course go into our settings here plugins and eq and change those around edit those add in new ones remove them if we wanted to so it's a really i guess uh, easy way to set it up to begin with but then you've got ultimate optimization, customization that you can do to make sure that you get the sound that you want. So that's a really good start there. Now, if we go into these options again, so sorry, let's go back to the browser. If we jump into instrument, then it will, by default, take us straight to the acoustic guitar nice room setting. But again, if we tap on that, we now have five different default templates for different types of acoustic guitar. We also have keyboards, so if you're recording an analog keyboard into GarageBand, then you can select these and this will sort of shape the sound of the keyboard you're recording. We have drums, so we have different drum recording effects. Vocals we've had before, producer effects. So these can be used not only for the initial recording, but can then be added after the, the fact if you're trying to, to make a mix and you want to put some different effects on the particular uh, mix. And then fun has <laughs> is where they've hidden the monster, the robot, the bullhorn, the telephone, the old sort of effects, but there's a few new ones in there like the extreme tuning effect that you have in there as well. So that's how we get in and access all of these effects. Now in terms of recording, so we've now, we've selected the nice room guitar, acoustic guitar recording here. We can set our tone, presence, room, compressor options there. The input, is similar to what we've had before. We've got the noise gate that we can turn on and off if we want to there. If we're getting background noise and hiss, you can see our input that's coming in there and you can see our output that we can put there. We can monitor our audio by tapping on that and it's gonna tell me that I need to plug in headphones if I wanna monitor. Um, so all of that, uh, if you've recorded before, you'd be familiar with that. If not, it's pretty intuitive and we'll cover that in another video. We're really just looking at the, the new options that we have in here now today. So I'll make sure, actually I'll just get rid of that recording. Make sure that my metronome is off and let's just record a little bit of guitar and then we'll see what we can do with some of these options. So there's just a little eight bars of guitar that we can play around with now. And if we go back to our track view here, there's our audio. So obviously this is recorded through the, uh, the microphone, built-in microphone on the iPhone. So doesn't sound fantastic, but you can still hear that little bit of room reverb that it's put on there. So it's automatically given this a little bit of a different feel and we can obviously play around with that. So if we hit play again.
So you can see there that as I add the room and then remove the room, then it does change that quite considerably. And the good thing that we have now here is that if we want to uh, change these settings substantially, then we can go in here and let's say, put on the dreamy chorus effect on here and we'll play again. So there you go, an instant chorus. And again, we have control over that. So if we wanted to put the space and the chorus right up to make it pretty extreme. There you go. We have a really sort of more extreme version of that chorus that we can play with there. Now, what you'll notice too is that we can change all of these settings. And then when we do, a little dot appears here next to the setting that we have on there. And that means that we've edited the default settings of that particular uh, type. Now, the, the cool thing that we can do in here is actually save our version of these settings, which we'll cover in another video. Um, but it means that you can have your own customized versions of each. So let's just do one more thing. So we're not limited to just using guitar for guitar, obviously, because it doesn't know what we've used. So if let's throw a producer effect on here and let's put the uh, shifting swirls, shall we? And play. Okay, that sounds just terrible. So we'll take that off. What about a filter, filter drive? What do we get there? Again, pretty terrible. So I'm using effects here that are not really for an acoustic guitar, um, so they're making it sound quite ordinary. But if I go back here and let's just go to a dark room and... There you go. So you can hear that you get a really quick way to sample uh, the different types of recording you can do. And, and the audio recorder, it's not just for vocals or guitars. Again, you can use it now for drums, you can use it for bass, for your keyboard instruments. So any analog source that you're recording, then you can actually go in and use these options. You can mix them as you go, you can record and then play with the settings afterwards. Uh, there's a whole heap of options that you have within there and then you can save those settings so that you've got your very own uh, version of that to use in the future. So I hope you found this useful. I hope you can get some use out of it yourself in your own projects and thanks for watching.